Our 2013 CES coverage is powered by Ford. Go further. Patrick Norton here, Texilla CES 2013. HD Nation people, I know you want 4K. It's coming. How is it going to get to your house? Maybe through a gateway instead of a set-top box. Mr. Joseph Del Rio from Broadcom. Talk to us a little bit about HEVC encoding and the evolution of the infrastructure that's going to bring us 4K video. Okay, great. So what HEVC encoding is, is a way of cutting in half the compression necessary, compression bit rate necessary to deliver video today. Now today, you're getting 1080p 60 video. In a couple years, you will have 4K by 2K consumer priced video coming to your home. But that's four times the resolution and clarity of 1080p 60. So imagine four 1080p 60 TVs in a rectangle on your wall. Now, you don't want to have to deliver that rate of bit video to the home It'd be very expensive. Well, I'm thinking like a, a typical uh, 720p Netflix is like four megabits per second. That would give us like a colorful blur where the video is supposed to be in a 4K situation. Exactly. So you, what you want to do is have that 4K by 2K resolution, but cut down the bit rate, right? That's what HEVC does. Suppose that camera wanted to compress this image that we're seeing on this wall. What AVC does today, it forms a grid. Just imagine a little grid of little squares, and it compresses all those little squares. It works great, it does a good job, but if you want to take it to the next level, you want to look at it and say, hey, look all that white space. I can do all that white space with the light number one. Mm -hmm. So why don't we just change the sizes of the squares? Why don't we make a big square there, a slightly small square there, a really tiny square over there where all those guys are walking by, and we can compress that. And that's how HGVC is going to reduce even further the amount of the information necessary to get to that 4K by 2K size. So we were talking earlier, some of the thing, one of the buzz around the show, some of the thing that's been buzzing is the idea of we're going to stop having 18 cable boxes in your house or four cable boxes. There's a gateway and then you start distributing the video around the house through other ways, preferably of course with a Broadcom chip. Tell us how the set-top box evolves to a gateway. Excellent question. Now, first of all, even that name is horrible, right? Set-top box. You can't put a set-top box on a flat panel, right? But what we are going to do is recognize there's many types of content coming into the home. Not just video, but applications and obviously data. And it's even two-way, where you want to be able to project back to other people what you're doing. So we're talking really about a media center, but we want to call, have a gateway to bring all that together in one place. And there's some really re real economic reasons you want to do this on. Maybe you want to aggregate where all the hard drive content is to one hard drive. That can reduce the number of hard drives and the power being consumed elsewhere in the house. We have these things called tuners, either in a satellite or a cable world. These tuners are very expensive. They burn power, they take up board space. No one wants to do that in a green world. So imagine if you could share all those tuners among all the devices and then redistribute the content from that gateway to the thin clients that are elsewhere. Great, we now save power. The government's liking us a little bit more because we're reducing, the, we're, we're being a little greener, right? But hey, guess what? There's that other guy that we have to take care of. That's the business guy that's distributing this to the home. He wants that box to stay out there for a while and, you know, and get a little return on his investment. And you don't want to have to keep buying a new box and having a guy come out to your house and reinstall it. And meanwhile, you're going to have new tablets coming out, new other CE devices. Wouldn't it be great if that gateway could handle all those new devices that haven't even been invented yet? That's why we were putting transcoding into this device. So we can be able to transcode content that's coming from the outside world to a device that may not even be in the market yet. And another thing we're thinking about is higher performance application processors. This Broadcom solution actually has a 21,000 DMIP CPU inside it. And if you think about the laptop you're probably using at home, that might be three or four DMIPs. This is five times the power of a PC. And it's there so we can be doing networking into the home, applications that haven't even been created yet, again, giving longevity to this device that has intrinsic value. One of the interesting things you mentioned, chip will be ready, boxes may be coming out as early as 2014, uh, and there's compelling reasons for uh, your cable company, your satellite company, to use HEVC now, uh, such as doubling the bandwidth on existing 1080p content? Yeah. yeah, let's put aside the 4K by 2K, that's cool, and we're going to have to wait for the, the market to come down to a point where that's a ubiquitous consumer appliance but there is reasons for using HEVC now. Think about the idea that, hey, if I wanted to stream more HD content to the home, wouldn't it be great if I could have the bandwidth? 
and that's what HEVC does. I can deliver twice the number of HE HD channels to existing set-top boxes today. That'd be great. Or if I was trying to evoke an over-the-top service, wow, maybe I can bump up from my 720p to a 1080p 30 or even beyond. That, that's value added to the subscriber. So another reason for the thinking of using of HEVC. So are you looking forward to getting 4K content into your house? Absolutely. I mean, we've been showing a few test streams here, but I remember that day back in like 2003 or four when the first uh, Olympics were done in HD and waking up really late at night to see the glistening off the glass and the, and, the, and the ice when the speed skaters are going around. I can only imagine with the next World Series or World Cup or Olympics and we're getting almost telepresence resolution. That's going to be very interesting to see. I'm looking forward to it. Mr. Del Rio, thank you so much. All right, looking around the Broadcom booth, looking around some of the show floor displays at the HDTV companies, I got to say the most compelling reason to look at 4K is sharpness. Oh my goodness, the level of detail is ridiculous. The big question though, where is the content? Well, we're going to find out sometime in the future how far out that's going to be, I don't know. Patrick Norton, Techzilla at CES 2013. To find more of our CES coverage, we have a whole bunch of beautiful LEDs, HDTVs, some projectors, and some exciting stuff in home theater, not to mention cameras and all sorts of other goodies. Go to revision3.com slash techzilla, revision3.com slash CES, or youtube.com slash techhd. I'm Patrick Norton. I am off to go find more cool stuff at CES 2013. Hey there, it's Stephanie from Revision 3 here at CES, and we are in the Ford booth with Julius Marchwicki, who's here to tell us about some exciting, very exciting very news exciting for news. developers. Huge news. So today we launched the developer program, the Ford developer program, available at developer.ford.com. It's the best place for app developers to create uh, safe, non-distracting, voice-activated applications for the vehicle. That's awesome. That sounds really exciting for developers. Now tell us, what are some of the tools that are available for these guys? Well, when developers log on to the website, they have access to sample code, the SDK, white papers, tips and tricks, a forum, blogs, uh, basically everything they need to know about how to create an application that's voice-enabled, that you can access all the features, but you keep your hands on the wheel, your eyes on the road, all activated via voice. So when I think about apps and cars, I'm thinking like music and news, but tell us a little bit more about some other cool apps that are out there. Yeah, so music and news are, are so essential for the car, and those are often the most fun. But location-based services are also a really, really big one. Um, so we launched an app called Glimpse, um, which is an application that lets you share your location with your friends. We also have Be Coupley, which uh, helps you find cool date ideas nearby. Uh, but on top of that, for, for news, we have USA Today and Wall Street Journal. We have a Kaliki news app that helps, uh, helps you find great content, uh, as well as Rhapsody. So lots of music there. Uh, so we're just really excited. It's going to be awesome. Great. So you should go to developer.forb.com to check out more information. And Julius, thank you so much for bringing us this amazing content from Ford. Thank you. Thank you so much, Stephanie. It was nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. All right.